So today we're gonna talk about ads. I can tell from my analytics that all you fuckers are using Adblock. And that's okay, I use Adblock too. If you're not familiar with Adblock, let's take a look at what it is. There are extensions or plugins, all kinds of things for every possible browser that are intended to block ads. Why would you want to block ads? Number one, you don't want to look at them. If ads annoy you and you're the kind of person that are never going to actually click on any of these special offers or sponsored messages, then you may just be inclined to just hide them. Reason two, they take up real estate space on your screen. Especially if you're on a mobile device or you've got a small laptop screen, you gotta scroll a lot. And sometimes the ads stay on the screen even when you are scrolling. If we're talking about ads on videos like YouTube, they are annoying and they're not really there to help you. The third reason is bandwidth. If you're on a slow connection or you're paying for bandwidth by the megabyte or gigabyte or you have a data cap on your ISP, every little bit helps. Google does it right with text-based ads that aren't really annoying, they really don't take up much bandwidth, they really don't take up much screen space, but a lot of websites, particularly news websites and newspaper websites, like to shove the ads down your throat. And you might want to save some bandwidth. Now if you get an ad for something that you're actually interested in, then you might want to click on it. I mean, that's kind of the point of them, but many people, myself included, are never going to click on an ad. Even if I see an ad for something that I think is interesting, I'm more likely to open a new tab and Google that thing and approach it that way than I will be to actually click on the sponsored link. So ad blocking is extremely common. And these extensions work very well. They work two ways. One of them is they block connections from your browser to servers and URLs that are known to be serving ads so that they prevent the ad from actually loading and consuming resources and consuming bandwidth. And then the other thing they do is they actually remove the element from the web page's DOM so that you don't see it. If they just blocked the connection, there would probably be a big gaping space in a lot of cases where the ad should be. And to effectively remove the ad and give you back all your real estate and make it easier for you to navigate the page, they actually remove the element as if it was never there in the first place. It's one of the few pieces of software that is literally set it and forget it. Many cases, people forget that they use an ad blocker until they use a device that doesn't have the ad blocker on it, and then they're like, what are all these ads? Like, oh yeah, I don't have my ad blocker on. Now, one thing that's become really prevalent these days, especially on news websites and legacy newspaper websites, is that they have an ad blocker blocker. They detect the fact that the ads they're serving you didn't load, and they cripple your experience. Now, on the best of these websites, they kind of just tell you, hey, you know, we kind of need the money, you know, please disable your ad blocker, but they still let you continue to the site and read their content. But on the worst of these, like for example, the Washington Post, they don't let you do anything until you turn your ad blocker off. Now, this is horrible. First of all, it's a really bad user experience for the person that's trying to visit your website. Presumably, they're going to your website because they want information fast, quick, and easy, and you're there to provide it for them. But if they have to do four or five clicks just to read content on your website, that's really annoying. It's kind of shitty. Most of these websites that do this don't really care about the user experience, they care about the money. Now these ad blocker blockers are even more annoying than the ads that they would have presented you if you didn't have ad blocker on. So they're kind of trying to get you to uninstall your ad blocker or turn it off for their website. And in many cases this works. There's a lot of people that just, they don't have time to put up with it. They disable their ad blocker for that website and they move on with their lives and they just read around the ads. But it, the experience doesn't have to be that way. Let me show you how you can block ad blocker blockers. Now I personally haven't yet found a really worthwhile ad blocker blocker plugin that just takes care of this automatically, but until one of those shows up, or if you found one, comment below and tell us all about it. Here's what I do. There's a pair of Chrome extensions I use. The first one is called Click to Remove Elements. You want to install it. Installing it's just as simple as installing your ad blocker. And it puts like this little radiation icon in your uh, address bar. 
The other extension is called Scroll Bar Anywhere. This one isn't necessarily required, but in some cases it really helps. Now here's what you do. You go to a website, as you normally would, and if one of these motherfucking in your face looks like your ad blocker is on, bullshit comes up, all you gotta do is click that little nuke icon in your address bar and click on anything you don't want to be there. So the first thing you do is click on the stupid pop-up, get rid of that. Then typically there's a big div that is blocking the entire page. That's what's preventing you from like getting to the actual content and scrolling down. So you click on that and get rid of that. Now all that bullshit's out of the way. Now to add insult to injury, these websites typically also prevent the page from scrolling. So there's two ways to solve this. If you've installed the scroll bar anywhere, you can right click drag to scroll the page regardless of whether or not they've allowed you to scroll it. But sometimes this doesn't work. Sometimes they're forcefully preventing the page from scrolling through JavaScript. So the easiest thing to do is just as you read the article, just click each paragraph to get it off the page. The paragraphs below it will just move up and you can read the page without having to worry about anything. If they're upset with you removing content from the page, just remove that content. The reason this works is that most of these techniques are lazy. They're sending you the content and then layering on a bunch of JavaScript and DOM bullshit to keep you from reading the content which is already inside your browser. It's already been received at your computer. They already sent you the content. So to sit there and expect that you're going to view it in the manner that they prescribe is unreasonable. If they don't want you reading their content without watching an ad, they should just not send you the content until you've seen the ad. As a content creator, I don't expect my viewers to watch ads. I don't expect them to use their electricity and their bandwidth to display content that they don't want to see. And if I really cared about that, if I really needed the ad money and didn't want my content going to anyone that didn't watch the ad, I would use a platform that was subscription based or some type of platform where you have to watch the ad before you get the content. The fact that most of these websites are lazy and they're just doing, you know, CSS tricks to make it harder for you to read their website without ads kind of indicates that they're not really reader centric. If they really had the pull that they think that they had, they would just make their website completely subscription based. For example, the New York Times, the New York Times in many cases, if you try to read an article, they will only send you the first paragraph and then they'll say, hey, you have to subscribe or sign up to read the rest of it. Hey, it's one thing if it's behind a subscription or an account or something, but if they're gonna sit there and send you content along with code that goes against the wishes of the person whose computer it's executing on, that's a really bad tactic. Nothing you do is going to make people look at content that they don't want to look at. Is this legal? This is perfectly legal. In fact, this is nothing new. In 1984, there was a Supreme Court case brought against Sony because people from Hollywood argued that the record and pause buttons on a Betamax VCR allowed people to skip ads. There are several other lawsuits every time some type of ad skipping VCR feature ever came out, and the ruling has always been that skipping ads does not violate copyright. This came up again when the Fox network sued Dish, the satellite TV provider, because their Hopper platform, their DVR thing, had this Prime Time Anywhere feature that automatically detected and skipped ads and they didn't like that. In its ruling, the Ninth Circuit held that the Primetime Anywhere feature was illegal under the Fair Use Doctrine of the Copyright Act. The court also ruled that skipping ads that were already recorded, like for example, those VCRs that have a button that just skips ahead 30 seconds, that doesn't even count for the purposes of copyright law because in that case, the, the content isn't being transformed or, or modified. And the consumer can always watch it later. You can't force people to watch things. Even if you could, from a technological standpoint, you could just put masking tape over the top of your browser window. In fact, there was an ISP called Net Zero um, back in the 90s, and their big thing was, you get the internet for free, but we just put like banner ads on the top of your screen. They realized that that didn't work and they had to start charging for their service, but there were people that just had large monitors and all they did was they just put some electrical tape over the area where the ads would display. Like, even if you think you're serving ads to people, you're not really serving ads to people because they're not looking at them. And that's why the CPM, or cost per mill, 
cost per 1,000 views of ads. For these types of ads, these compulsory ads are relatively low. If you're a content creator, you make ads on YouTube, you've ever worked in radio, you know that the highest ad revenues are commanded by product placement, live reads, and on YouTube, the actual person doing the ad live inside the video, indistinguishable from the rest of the content. And I mean, that's taken into account in the CPM. They know that if they serve out a thousand ads to you, only a fraction of those people are even really gonna see it, let alone click on it. So, you know, it, it's, it's nothing that you as a consumer really need to be bothered with. If you like my video, click like, comment below, tell me about the most egregious website that shoves ads down your throat and what you're doing to stop it. I'm not delusional, I don't expect people to look at the ads on my videos, so if you really do want to support the channel, go ahead and click on that Patreon link. And if you don't, there's nothing I can do to make you, so... It's the way it works. That's why you, the people, have a choice in the matter. Otherwise it would just be Soviet Russia.